Hey, it's Matt McWilliams here, and today I have a question from Brian Burney, who is one of our students in our No Product, No Problem affiliate marketing training course, and, and he reached out to us, ironically, and you'll see why that's ironic in a second, on Facebook, in our private Facebook group for our VIP students, and he asked, is there a good resource for running Facebook ads for an affiliate program? And the answer is yes, and I'm actually going to share this over the next couple of episodes, which are both brought to you by Jeff Goins' upcoming launch for his Tribe Writers course. If you have an audience of bloggers or aspiring authors or aspiring platform builders, go check out Jeff's launch at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash Goins launch. G-O-I-N-S launch. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash Goins launch. You can learn more about Jeff's upcoming promotion. So a couple of things, kind of housekeeping type things, that you need to know before you get started on Facebook ads, specifically for affiliate marketing. Now, some of the advice I'm going to share over the next couple episodes is general Facebook ads advice that you definitely want to know, of course. You want to follow the best practices. But the first thing that you need to know as a heads up, is, is first off, don't send them directly to your affiliate link. The simple reason is this can get you banned, and it will get you banned. If You, know, you may last for a week, may last for two weeks, a month, I don't know, but eventually it will get you banned. Facebook and Google are very similar in this regard. They don't they don't want to send people away from their site. You know, they're focused on user experience. So you want to make sure that your landing pages are compliant as well. Not just not sending them to, to the affiliate link, but you want to make sure that your landing pages are compliant. The second reason for this is, you know, even if it wasn't like you weren't going to get banned, this allows you to grow your list. This ultimately can allow you to grow your list. You really have one of two choices. You either need to um, send them directly to a page that basically says, click here. You know, you kind of pre-sell the offer or you turn them into subscribers, which of course is where you get to grow long term. So you definitely do not want to send them directly to an affiliate link for no other reason than they're going to get banned. Again, think about it. If Facebook is focused on user experience. They want people long term to be clicking on these ads. And if you're sending them directly to an affiliate link, a lot of times that's not the best experience that you can offer them. So again, you can't get away with this even if you're even if you're cloaking it you're redirecting them, whatever. You cannot get away with sending them directly to an affiliate link. Just as a side note, you even need to be careful on this if you are a merchant. You're running your own ads, but you're using affiliate tracking as you're tracking, which I you'll hear me say numerous times, don't use affiliate tracking for anything other than what it's intended for, and that's affiliate tracking. For one, you're kind of screwing your affiliates out of commissions if they were to click on your ad, but you don't want to do that because it could get you banned. Second big thing here is with any PPC, any pay-per-click advertising, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, you name it, you want to start hyper-focused and then expand from there. So what that means is you start off, you know, this, this comes back from my days doing AdWords. I talked about how you know, I, I used to, when we run AdWords, I used to say, you know, we would only run ads for our insurance offer. We would only run ads between like 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. every day when we were entering a new market or when we were testing out some new keywords. The simple reason is that's when our conversions were their highest. So we started out running ads for three hours a day to get our best results. So some examples of this might be, you know, you've got like single moms, 25 to 34, who homeschool and live in the South. That's a pretty hyper-targeted market, right? You might have, you know, married male business owners who are 45 and older, who have 45 and older who have no kids at home. Very targeted. Diabetic males who are single, ages 30 to 49, who live in the U.S. And you may think, well, why? What are some of the things? Why would I have some of those factors? And they're like. Why diabetic males who are single? Well, maybe diabetic males who are single struggle with different parts of, of their diabetes than married men do. Why men versus women? Because men, you know, relate differently than women. And again, starting off, I'm not talking about forever. If you have a product that could eventually hit the mass market, I'm not talking about forever only targeting these very hyper, you know, hyper targeted groups. I'm talking about early on when you're only going to spend 
five, 10, maybe 50, 100 bucks a day, you want to get hyper targeted so you're getting the most out of that. Think about like this huge pie. And you, or well, actually, I've got a better example. If you're going to spend a hundred bucks a day, and let's just say ultimately it's going to cost a dollar a click, just for argument's sake here, it's a hundred clicks. Do you want those hundred clicks spread out over this big pie or over the pie, that, you know, the piece of the pie that's converting at say 10%? You know, when the whole pie is converting at 2%, I want my, my 100 clicks focused on that very small slice of the pie, even if it turns out I only spend $72 that day. Again, I can always expand from there. So generally speaking, though, you want to avoid 99.7% of the time, you want to avoid people who are under 25 or in college, unless that really, really fits their niche. You think about where, where were you when you were 22 years old? You had no money, right? I know when I was, you know, just out of college, I, I lived with my mom. I was making less than $15,000 a year to start off with. I was starting a business. I didn't have any money. You could think you could have the best ad in the world. I'm not buying what you offer. It took me like four months to save up for Corey Rudell's yeah, if you remember him from back in the day, Corey Rudell's uh, tra internet marketing training, it was $97 and they shipped it to me. I think I paid like 105 bucks, including shipping and handling. It took me like four months to save up for that, right? So you, there's nothing you could target me that I'm going to buy anytime soon. <laughs> you know, So don't target people who are under 25 or in college. And if you can get a little bit more grain, you'll learn that, great. But I'm just saying that's a general rule of thumb. Third thing is get clear on the end game. What is your end game with this set of ads? Is it profitability? I'm going to spend 100 and make 200. Is it to support a friend? So I don't really care if I make any money. I'm just supporting Joe. I want to get him $10,000 in sales. In fact, I don't even care if I lose $1,000 because this is for him. You know, is it for a you know developing a relationship like that? Is it to boost your standings on the leaderboard? So think of like I've done this where the difference between fourth place and third place was worth $10,000 in terms of a prize. And I spent thousands of dollars in ads to try to go from fourth to third. And I don't think I ended up, I didn't lose much money. I probably lost like a few hundred bucks in terms of commissions. I spent say $4,000 and I made like 3,800. But that $200 could have made me 10,000. Turns out I actually didn't work. I, I barely missed a third place, but you get the idea. My object, I was clear on my end game, so I wasn't worried about my spend. I wasn't worried about profitability. I was trying to boost up my standings. And then the fourth thing is know how much time you have. You know, are you building to likes because that's a long term strategy for affiliate marketing? Or is this for a product launch and you've got like 72 hours, like that example I just gave you? Just be clear on how much time you have. That affects your strategy. Are you sending them directly to a page where it's like, click here to get this? Are you building a list? Are you building likes? All of, Nothing's wrong with any of those. It just varies based on how much time you have. And then fifth thing, you're going to come back tomorrow because we're going to talk about specifics, but fifth thing is just get ready to test, 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 and then test some more. When you get tired of testing, you're going to test your tests, right? That's what ultimately leads to success with Facebook ads or any paid ads for that matter. So, I will see you in the next episode. We're going to learn some specific strategies that are very specific to Facebook marketing for affiliates. I'll see you then.